Hi guys, Professor Vosa, Professor Brugger from City Tech, the Biological Sciences Department, once again. And today we're looking at the sea star. I don't like to say starfish because it's not a fish. That's true. Yeah. So sea star is what I'm going to try to stick with. <laughs> <laughs> so which phylum were we in today? Ooh, it's spiky, spiky. skin. Wow. So spiky, spiny skin, echinodermata, spiny skin. Okay. Echinoderms. Hmm. Hmm. So what other echinoderms might students be familiar with in addition to the sea star? The sea urchin. Sea urchin. Lots of long spines there. Oh yeah, you, I wouldn't be doing this. No, not at all. <laughs> um, the um, sand dollar. Sand dollars. But uh, they look smooth to me. Yeah. They yeah. have tiny, tiny spines. Yeah. And then this one is not an easy one. The sea cucumber. Sea cucumber? Is this something you eat? <laughs> yes, actually salad? you can. Yes. But it's not a vegetable. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a long tube, uh -huh. a very chunky like this too. Yeah, sure. um, yeah. Hmm. and it has those little spikes sometimes, hmm. but they're very varied in colors and shapes. Do sea stars, sorry, not starfish, but do sea stars typically have five arms? No, sometimes they have more. Okay. Or just four, I think. Okay. I've seen four, yeah. Okay. Um, but I guess for one species, the number of arms is rather fixed. Okay. Unless they had an injury and then sometimes the arm can split or something. Mm. So these guys have, these animals have regenerative powers? Yep. I heard that like fishermen didn't like sea stars mm -hmm. because they eat mussels. And so they would take the sea stars and chop them and then throw them away so that they wouldn't take the mussels the fishermen were going for to sell. And actually that would make more sea stars because all those little pieces would regenerate. Wow, incredible. So it backfired big time. Incredible. <laughs> all right, so what part of the animal were we were looking at here? This... Um, so this part is called aboral. Aboral, okay. It would be the equivalent of dorsal. Okay. So we're looking at the back of it. The okay, so there's no mouth on this side? No. Okay. Uh, actually, there's an anus on this side. Oh. Uh, I have no idea where, okay. but it should be somewhere in this area, okay. right? <laughs> and then if we turn it around, wow, that's the oral part. Oral side, okay. Ooh, it smells bad, like formaldehyde, <laughs> bad. So we have the mouth somewhere here okay. in the middle. Can we see it? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, it's deep in there. Hmm, Looks like a... there's a bunch of suction cups. Yes. What's going on here? They're very cute. Lots of them. Um, are these the feet? Feet. Tube feet. That's right. Tube feet. Can I pull one out? Tube feet. Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> That's not coming out. Ah, so what do they use these things for? To, to walk. To walk. To yeah. move. Yeah, they don't walk like moving those arms. Yeah. They move using those little feet. They will inflate them, right? Uh-huh. And then they stick out, and then you have thousands of little feet moving. Wow. Um, do they also assist with respiration, that is, breathing? Yeah. Um, yeah, they do. So, ha, ah, they breathe through their feet. <laughs> I don't want to um, apply that to myself, but I'm not sure it would be a good idea. <laughs> So, hmm, I heard there was something on the ab oral, or this side of the uh, starfish, that looks kind of like a little drain that you'd find in your bathtub. To me, it looks like a pimple. Oh, well, there you go. Got... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's right here. Ah, yes, it looks like a little button. Yeah. And what is that? It's called the madriporite, or the sieve plate. Ah, fantastic. So what does it do? I think it allows water to uh, enter the star. Why would you want water going inside of your body? I mean, this thing lives in the ocean, right? It's like a flushing system. Flushing, okay. <laughs> well, they, they don't have blood or anything like that. What? Wait a minute, let's stop here. This is an animal with no blood? Mm -mm. No blood. And so it's using salt water to move things around? Yep. And it all starts in this little pimple here? Yes. That's the That's point ridiculous. of entrance. We gotta stop this video. This animal is nuts. <laughs> this is a weird animal. And then look at the symmetry. What is this symmetry? Is this bilateral? No. It's radial. 
that's definitely radial. It's organized around this point and then we shoot arms all over. That's radial, no bilateral symmetry. But still, when I look at the classification on the phylogeny, it says bilateral animal. Did they make a mistake? Maybe. Hmm. What's going on here, Boza? I think hmm, we need to look at the larvae okay. of these animals. Okay. And the larvae... Shh, Wait a minute, what's a, a larvae, first of all? That's the immature stage, okay. the young. Okay. Um, and uh, you need a microscope to see them. Okay. And they have bilateral symmetry. Oh. And then when they become adult, they decide, okay, let's just get rid of that symmetry. It's not good for us. We go for radial because we're not going to move much or fast. And radial is better because we can just grab from all sides. Wow, very <laughs> cool. So we see a shift from bilateral to radial. So that radial symmetry is secondary. Okay. As they're still considered bilateral. Wow, that's unique. Yeah. And, and are these protostomes or deuterostomes? Deuterostomes. So what? again, yeah. This is the first one. Yeah, it makes its mouth deutero second. Uh -huh. So uh, the anus is older than the mouth. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Just like us. Yes, our, our anus comes first. Yep. Wow. So actually, they like to use those animals when they uh, study early embryos rather than taking human embryos. Mm. It's convenient to take those because they have those big embryos that you can observe under a microscope because they're in water and that's just enough for them. And you can look at the divisions. Wonderful. Of the, Cells. So, Voza, while you start dissecting mm -hmm. this crazy animal, <laughs> I'm going to tell the students a little bit about their stomachs. <laughs> and yes, it is plural. They have two stomachs. The first is the pyloric stomach, and the second is the cardiac stomach. Voza, why do they have two stomachs? Why not? Well, there you go. I like to eat. Two stomachs would be great. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, what is their favorite item to eat, or favorite uh, organism to eat? I believe these are predators, and they like to eat mussels, Ooh. like me. So, bivalves, and so somehow they've got to open up those two shells. What, what body structure would these guys use to open up a bivalve? Their little tube feet. Tube feet? Yeah, these uh, feet are strong. Oh, my goodness. So you're telling me those thousands of feet suck on or attach to the shells and these powerful arms are able to open up that bivalve? Yep. And then once it is open, what does it insert into the bivalve to start digestion? A stomach. A stomach? You're telling me that a starfish takes one of its two stomachs and takes it out of its mouth and sticks it into the bivalve. Uh, yeah. That's ridiculous! This animal gets more and more ridiculous the more we talk about it. <laughs> it's not ridiculous, it's just one way of doing it. So it kind of pukes out its stomach, yeah. releases digestive enzymes into the bivalve, turns the bivalve's tissue into kind of like a, a slurry or a, or a sludge, and then sucks it all up? Mm-hmm. Ah! That's definitely not heterotroph by ingestion <laughs> anymore. Oh my goodness. It's heterotroph by some sort of absorption, yeah. really enough. So they're trying to make wow. us lie because we said animals are heterotrophs by ingestion. Right. Uh, yeah, I hear all this crunching going it's on. It's tough while you're to cutting. cut. <laughs> so I just cut in the that's central area here. Uh -huh. And it's just a mush. A mush, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was trying to see that connection of the madriporite right. to yeah. the rest of the body, but I think I missed the area. A it's all bit. good. So what happens is when the water, when the seawater is brought into the madriporite, also known as the sieve plate, it then enters what we call the water vascular system. So it's kind of like their circulatory system. Around the center of the animal, where Professor Boza is currently cutting, there is a ring. And then that ring extends via a tube down each of the five arms. So it's got the pentaradial symmetry. And uh, it's the water vascular system delivers all the water to all the parts of the starfish. I'm making a mess. Oh, sea star. Sorry, sea star. <laughs> Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we should just move on to one of the arms. I think that's what I'm going to do Absolutely. because I'm fighting this animal. <laughs> and it's not even alive. Nope. So as Professor Boza noted, uh, sea stars are 
ravenous predators. They love eating bivalves and, and other, other creatures, which means given that they're eating all of the time, a majority of their body is dedicated to what? Digestion. Digestion, which means what is the, is the stomach fill up the entire inside? What's going on? I think the stomach was just in that area, oh, right? Okay, okay. But then we are getting into the arms. Oh, I see a lot of different it's, things. It's in very the arm. dense in oh, here. Oh my! Oh, this is going to be difficult to identify, Boza. <laughs> Maybe we should. Just I think it's either digestive or reproductive. Ooh. Okay. So it's quickly done, right? Should we hit stop on this video recording and go uh, brush up on our, uh, our anatomy? There's a lot going on here. I feel overwhelmed. <laughs> I think we should be fine. No, we'll okay. figure it All out. Right, fair enough. Come on. You know, as you peel up that, uh, that skin, if you will, it looks ribbed. What's going on there? Yeah. What is that? That's an endoskeleton. That's uh, a skeleton. Yeah, it's tough. It's actually ah. very hard. Can you rub your uh, scissors along it? Can we hear it? I'm not a musician. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so you've revealed a uh, um, a mass that kind of looks like uh, I don't know a fish fillet or something. I don't know <laughs> what that looks like. All that is digestive. That's These all digestive. The white, the lighter part, that's digestive. Look at this. I'm trying to not break it. Indeed, we call that the hepatic cecum. Ooh. The hepatic cecum, that is all digestive gland. So as you just learned, these guys love to eat. And if you're gonna be doing eating, a lot of eating, and you're gonna need to digest that food, you need a lot of enzymes. And so all five arms, a majority of the space is dedicated to hepatic seca, mm -hmm. makes digestive enzymes. Wow, oh, that's a lot. What is underneath? Oh, what is this looks brown, like, foamy yuckiness? Looks like eggs. Eggs? Mm. Mm. That's reproductive. Wow, reproductive. That's huge. Sometimes this is all tiny, but right? this sea star has it all wow. in the entire arm. We call this the gonad, or oh. the reproductive uh, structures. So gonads make the eggs, mm -hmm. sperm cells, right? Yep. Are there males and females? No clue. <laughs> Be sure to read your lab manual. <laughs> so that's a lot. Wow. Wow. It looks like it was in the middle of some reproduction of wow. some sort because that's a lot. So there seems to be this pink line running down the bottom of the arm. What is that? This one? Yeah, what is that? That's a canal. A canal? Yeah. And it looks like there's some squishy structures on either side of that Here. canal. Yeah, what are those? Yeah, that leads to the little tube feet we can oh, see on the other yeah, side. yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are called, oh, I won't say the word. I'm leaving it to you. Ampula? Yeah, ampula. And what's going on? So we remember that the water enters through the sieve plate or yep. madrep madreporite. Then it goes into those canals. Mm hmm and then it inflates the ampulla or goes in the ampulla mm -hmm. that pushes the water into the tube feet. Wow. So then the tube feet will stick out and wow. they're, yeah, that's hydraulics. Wow. Right? <laughs> so you're telling me that if the sieve plate or the madreporite were to get clogged, the starfish theoretically might not be able to move anymore or just survive. Well, yeah, because they also get their oxygen from that water, right? Wow. So they would. So if you just clog that madreporite, that's it. Oh man, that's a weakness. Yikes! <laughs> All right, did we see everything we needed? Oh, tell me about eyeballs. I heard starfish have uh, eyeballs. Somewhere at the tip of the arms. Tip of the arms? What are you talking about? I don't see an eye. No, I don't see an eye. I don't see an eye, but that's where they should be, right? I agreed. So at the Maybe tips, that white little At the tips thing. of the arms. Hold that steady there, Boza. Uh, at the tips of the arms, there are a number of eyeballs. Numerous oh, eyeballs really? at the tips of each arm. Indeed. Hmm. Crazy creatures. Wow, they're amazing, though. Yeah, can we get a close-up on those um, uh, tube feet underneath, if you don't mind, please? Underneath the starfish. Those are really, really cool. Whoa, look at those. <laughs> Woo! You see the spines. Again, these are echinoderms, so spiny-skinned animals. 
And the two so those are sticking out of the tissue. So does this have an exoskeleton like the grasshopper or an endoskeleton? It's considered endo. It was definitely inside, yeah. as we saw. And then when the animal dies, mm -hmm. the skin is going to be degraded. Okay. And the skeleton remains. Awesome. Yeah.